Dave here, how are you? Today is the 2nd of June, the second day of winter for us down here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, second day of June 2019. Thank you everyone for dropping in. Uh, I'm doing a quick read down the side here. It's cold in some parts and I've also heard that in the Northern Hemisphere parts of it are warming up big time. So that's the weather report. <laughs> Oh, one of the other things I've done today is I've... Uh, oh, sorry, can someone please let me know if the stream's coming through okay or not, sound, image, all that kind of stuff. The reason I ask that is because I just want to make sure it's happening. The other thing is I've set three of these cameras to set focus. Uh, there, it's not going to be uh, hunting at all. I can move back here. It's not going to go mucking around. I can come in closer and I can hold something up for you to see. And whilst it may not be super duper sharp there, it's going to hopefully make the stream work a whole lot better. All right, all good. Thank you, thank you everyone. So today on the show, put the old person specs on, let's have a look. We're gonna keep on working with the uh, dressing table that my great grandfather built. And I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to rejuvenate old shellac to make it come up looking really, really nice. It's, uh, it's fantastic. These things I'm learning, I was never taught this, I'm learning as I'm going because necessity is the mother of research. <laughs> you were gonna say invention, weren't you? Well, it's not. Uh, well, it could be, but you know, stop waffling, David. Okay, um, and also I'm gonna look at the mirror supports. Now, this is the mirror off the dressing table. Now, it's a, this is a, it's a beautiful, you can see everything that I can see there. Look at that. And it's probably like those Doctor Who shows where you see mirror on, mirror on, mirror on, mirror on, mirror. I wonder if that would get to that kind of... Uh, I'm still waffling. Okay, so what I want to do is you'll notice on the side here, we've got these. Now, these are old brass mirror supports. And I need to be able to find those things. I haven't got them. They're on the M4 somewhere, probably being picked up by a street sweeper. So if anyone knows where I can get those, and I can show you a little bit more on the back, where I can get a set of the lugs that I've got to put in the uprights to support this mirror. And you'll notice also, there's a bit missing here. I've got it. I found that part. So it's going to look like that at that end. Now also these old mirrors, there's a tim solid timber backing on this. And there's three screws down here. And when I take this out, it's going to allow me to tidy up all of this cedar. This is beautiful Australian cedar to make it look really, really nice. Now across the top here, it looks really dull in comparison to this stuff under here that's been sheltered from ultraviolet light. So how cool is this? So we're gonna do all of that. Oh, one of the other things I better do straight away is you know my workshop sign that's hanging up the top there that says workshop? This one here that, that my granddaughter Zoe made for me. It's her 14th birthday today. So happy birthday, Zoe. And I think we should get you back on the show very soon as you're going forward with a, uh, the chat on the side image too big. Okay, let me see if I can fix that. Let me see. What I'll do is I shall slide this across to there. Is that better, guys? Is that going to work all right? Or is it too small? There you go. I'll hit this little button, and that takes us down to there. Brian Shaw, try Mother of Pearl in Sydney for those brackets. Thank you so much for telling me that. Um, I will. I will. Or if someone wants to send me some. <laughs> I'm a shocker. All right. First thing off, let's do this clean up on the cedar and I'm going to go to Carl Camp for this. This is look at that there and we're going to make that look really beautiful. Now you want to see how that piece that I did last week turned out. Look at this. I'm so happy with it. Now it looks a little shiny but that's because the lights in here are extremely bright. Now if you have a look here this is original. I haven't touched this apart from do what I'm about to do now. And I think it's a great match. Okay. Still same size font, narrow column, better, but not fixed. 
the font is too big on the side. You know what, guys? Um, do you know why I do that? Well, I'll drop it down one. Let's see if it'll work. Give me a sec. Because, is that better? The reason being, when Vicky and I watch this show in the evening, I, you know, just to review it and see how everything went, we, um, we're old and decrepit, and <laughs> it's on the television, and we like to be able to read what's going on there. Okay, so what do you think? That's come up so well. Let's do this tidy up so you can see what's happening. Coffee? Well, that's wasted five minutes of your life, hasn't it? Chris, Barry's not going to come on the show. <laughs> John Woodfine was born today, 1944. John, John's also sent a project in for me to show everyone. So let's go to Carl Camp. And I'll go through this. There we go. How's that? Now, it's not hunting for focus at all. I can bring this up and show you without worrying about looking at everything else. So that's how it looks right now. Let's give it a tidy up. Now, there's this thing called U-Butte, this way around, Polish Reviver. And that's what I'm going to use. Now, what you've got to do, it's a mix of oil and some magic potion. You've got to shake it up. Okay, so it's like that. And then we have to use this kind of stuff. This is steel wool, 4-0. Okay, and I'm hoping I've got some here. Yeah, so it's this stuff. Don't use the stuff that's got soap in it, you know, that you do the, <laughs> do the pots with. Of course, it's going to end up in tears. Okay, let's get rid of that. It's a little better now. Okay, good. Now this makes it, it ends up absolutely filthy because, okay, you're liking the camera better. Watch this. You just get in there ruthless. You'll be amazed at how much grime has built up on these kind of things. I'm going to finish with the grain. Making sure I get all the corners. Look at that. That is rubbish. Filthy, filthy, filthy. And a paper towel to clean it off so we don't have all the grime dry there. And it says, give it another hit if it needs it. So I'm going to use the paper towel this time to give it another hit. Now I could leave it. And I'm going to leave it like that for a little while. And we're going to move on to something else. Have a look now. Now, can you see... What an amazing transformation that is. I'm amazed. Stephen Lee, how are you? So there we go. That's that. And whilst, whilst that's drying, because I'm going to hit with, with some wax as well in a minute, we'll flick it back over to there. Have a look at it from there. That is such a transformation. This is the other end. Why it's like that, I don't know. I can clean it up, but doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? And these are the um, these are the draw boxes for either side. That's that was the side of it that we're cleaning up. So I need to make more of these because these got smashed off. So there you go. It's this section here, and I don't know what I'm going to do here. See this part here? It, this was ornate, came up and did a roll back towards this piece that was up here like that. I may, I may end up just bringing it up to there and then rolling it over there in the support. I'm not sure. Okay, works much better. I don't feel like I have a Stanton hangout. I'll tell you what, it was so easy to do. <laughs> I, 
I feel really sorry for you guys. You've persisted with me. And uh, I say thank you to that, for that. All right. Let's go over to the uh, jointer and the table saw. And we can see we can uh, get some things happening there. I've got it all set up. And this camera also is locked on focus. Let's see how it goes. I need, I need, I need some muffs of some sort i don't know where my eye muffs are they're probably in here you know i get things ready and there's always one rotten thing that's deciding that it was going to be somewhere else it was out beside the cnc there we go okay down to here i'm going to run this cedar this is surian cedar this is not australian cedar this is thicker than um, the Australian cedar that I've got, and I need it this thickness. So I'm going to run this over the jointer, and I've got to remember not to talk too loud while I've got all this set up. Turn on the dust extractor. Make sure that it's pulling through here. Yep, beautiful. What else would you do on a, on a Sunday morning? Well, Dr. Greg, of course, is off to church um, or on a Saturday night. Unless, of course, you're a Seventh-day Adventist, you'll probably also be off to church. OK, I've got it set to one millimetre. I'm going to dress one edge before I put it over the saw. It's lucky it never quite got there. Let's keep going. Nearly. One more pass should be there. Ah, I'm going to drop it down just a little bit more. The other side has got a really bad woof on it. I can't, I don't know if you can see that, but this side, the bow is huge. So I'm going to, I think I've got a little bit of a double bow there. So I've dropped it down a little bit deeper. That's better. Full cut. Beautiful. I'll shut this dust port. We'll go through the table saw. Pull that open down there. Now, This is narrow, so I've got the push stick here as well. I've made sure that the push stick can travel right the way through. There's two ways I could do this. I could use the push stick, or I could push the timber half the way through, turn the saw off, turn the timber over, and go again. I'm going to use the push stick. And you watch how much dust comes off this. Nothing. It's all going up through the guard and under the table. See that? Beautiful cut. I need two of them, so I'm going to put it over the jointer again. Other direction, bit of tear out. Beautiful. That's the thing with softwoods. They're harder to plane than hardwoods with because they chip away easily. But that's looking really pretty. We'll rip this one down as well. Now I'm not using a set of fingers here. The reason being, this has got quite a bow in the outside, so they'd hold and then they'd relax. 
So I'm sliding it past my hand here, and so they're the fingers that I've got at the moment. And it's way away from the blade. I'm looking for grain direction again. Now I know, I know who won. I'm gonna set that up. Let's, the stock guys. I know who won the table saw stock guys and I'm not gonna tell you yet. <laughs> uh, I could plane these by hand or I think, I think I'll use the, um, The mag switch guide but I haven't got it in here so we won't do that right at the moment anyway I'll bring these back over here and switch cameras and there all right back again I'm gonna read again okay thinking about building my 10 inch into a huge bench with drawers why not okay uh, Dave M from Wisconsin. How are you, buddy? Corner. Yes, indeed it is. So these are my two uprights that are going to support this mirror. So they'll be fashioned either side. Now, I, I might need a little bit of help with this. Originally, originally these had little finials on the top. Now, it looked very busy. It had, um, it had four. It had one on either side of the draw boxes and then one either side of the mirror support. And it just looked full on. But I think that was part of the thing that was happening back then when Arthur built this. Now, you've got to remember, this is... My mum's 90, so... She would have had this when she was 15. I think Arthur would have built it for her. So, um, 75 years. Now, the book that I'm going to show you, well, when I find it, there it is. I can't see for looking. I'm going to show you this book here. Now, this was Arthur's book, and this is 110 years old. Okay? I love it. And one of the things I found in here was something that tripped me up a little bit. I was always under the impression with dovetails that you used a 1 in 6 and a 1 in 8 ratio for softwoods and hardwoods. So 1 in 6 being sharper was for softwoods and a 1 in 8 was for, um, for hardwoods. So I had a look in this book last night while I was checking because I was thinking maybe I could find some pictures of the dressing table so I could kind of shape up these draw boxes to come up to the mirror in a traditional manner because, as I say, I, I think I've got some photos of it. Uh, anyway, but while I'm here, let's have a look at this and we'll switch over the cameras. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but, you know, let's have some fun. I'll go to Carl Cam when this thing wants to work for me. There and there. Okay, so this is the book. And I'll hold it up a little bit because I can. It's not going to go hunting. I love this book. Right, the older I get, the more I like this book. It's crazy. All right, so here we go. Angle of dovetails. The angle for cutting dovetails to obtain the maximum amount of strength from the joint may be either 1 in 6 or 1 in 8. It will be found advantageous to cut exterior dovetailing, such as drawers, instrument cases, and uh, C, whatever that is, where they must have a neat appearance. One in eight and the, he and the heavier types for carcasses, bases and chests, is one in six. So they're saying for drawers and anything that's going to be neat, one in eight. The heavier stuff, one in six, to obtain the bevel 
Set out a line square with the edge of the board, divide into six or eight parts as required, erect a perpendicular one division long, and set the bevel as shown in figure two, or make a dovetail template to both angles in figure three. I love it. How nice is this? And they even tell you how many degrees. See, if you can see here, I don't know if you can see that. It says 82 degrees. <laughs> okay, now this book has a wealth of information. And some of the stuff, oak bureaus, French hall table, an occasional table, Some of the stuff I look at in here and I go, wow, that's really, really nice. And it's for a, for a hand basin. <laughs> it's amazing. Look at the detail in that leg. Who would do that these days? You know I'm a king of melamine. I love melamine. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Um, so I thought you might be interested to see that. You know, it, it's just amazing what's in here. I love these old cabinets that have got drawers like that. I love that stuff. Imagine all the things. You make one of those for your workshop. This, that takes, um, it's a filing cabinet. It takes fool's cap folders in the, and on that bottom shelf drawer thing. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let's switch over cameras again to there. Back to me. All right. Now. Let's, I'm, I'm hunting around a little bit at the moment. The time is 20 past. We're not doing too bad. How many people we got watching, guys? Oh, yeah. It's just, it's another world. Snakes, hey? All right. <coughs> Where am I up to? Let me read through here. Salvage and Ant dresser continue with the project well I've shown you where I'm up to with that and that's it's great fun I'm I'm enjoying it so much um, 82 watching there you go uh, next Friday so John's having a quick chat with me there so next Friday uh, Saturday and Sunday is the timber tools and artisans show in Sydney so I will be there please come down and uh, have a chat come and say good day if I haven't met you already come and say hi uh, I will be there in, I think it's a three by three meter stand. It might be three by six, depending on how generous the, uh, the organizers are. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to be taking the benches. I will be doing a discount, a show special for the benches as well. So don't order a bench off me during this week. Come to the show and buy one from me at the show and I'll look after you. So I'm going to do a pretty good discount and also, 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 I'll be throwing in a couple of things. I'll be throwing in a bottle of wax for you to work on your bench. So all the accessories, we'll be doing plans for the benches as a pack and I'll be doing accessories as well. So come and have a look. John will be there with all his yellow box um, shed accessories for you know all sorts of things. I don't know if he's gonna be bringing any of these. What he's got is fascinating. You see he just, developed a, um, a dust port for the Craig jig and it works really well left or right so you know he spent a lot of time nutting it out and also <clears throat> also 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 uh, we'll, we'll have a card reader there so you know if you don't have cash you can pay by card and Vicky will be there with some of her stuff as well she said you know I'm I don't want just women to have to or you know partners let's not be sexist <laughs> partners dragging along behind the interested partner and having nothing to do. Uh, wax for the air for, no, you can't, sorry. <laughs> so she said, how about I tag along and I'll have earrings and stuff there that she makes, she makes really, really nice. I said, okay, well, what kind of price are you gonna put on? I think you should say 20 or $25 because they're really, really nice. And she said, five bucks, five bucks a pair. So <laughs> as I say, crazy, this is show specials. Um, Come on down. <laughs> Sorry, it was starting to sound a bit like that, but it is really nice. I'm going to try and make these up. I'm going to try and make a heap of these as well in a kit form 
and bring them down. But I've only got a few days to get, get all this sorted. So there you go. If you're in Sydney and you want one of the benches, come and see me, discount price. And if you're anywhere else in the country, um, I'm, you know, it'll just be business as usual, sorry. See me in Canberra, I'll be down for that one and I'll be doing a show special for there as well. Okay, so now we've got, that's at, um, it's on James Roos Drive at the race course at, just near Parramatta. Uh, John's amazing CNC creation. Now John sent this to me last week and I failed to throw it up for you. Now they had a plumbing problem and so John thought, you know what, how about I make an inspection panel. Now from there, it may not look like much, but he did that on his CNC and you know he's a bit of a, uh, I was going to say DC Comics, but he's a Marvel comic fan. So here we go. So that's Iron Man in the middle of this thing. I don't know how many hours he spent doing this or whether he just grabbed a, this Spider-Man over on the corner there as well. You have a look at it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, whether he designed it or whether he just grabbed it off the web somewhere and punched it out on his machine. But that's pretty cool. Uh, what else have we got? And then we have uh, Ken. Ken some, sent some stuff in. Now, you remember last week, Ken sent this photo in. This is his, the beginning of his Lego table that's being built. And he also sent this photo in to me. And uh, so that's the continuation. I don't know. It looks like he's going to build the Empire State Building on that thing. It's massive, this table. And then whilst we're here, let's jump in. He's also got some, an old saw that was given to him. And that's not a bad thing. That's a pretty handy miter saw. So does anyone know what brand that is? That's, uh... Are you saying it's an internet file grab, John? Okay, there you go. So th this is set can saw. So he wants to know how to clean up. So I've said, look, Possibly duck into one of the stores that sell those. And I know that Carbotech sell a similar blade. I don't know if it's the same size. Replace the blade and clean the top rail off with possibly some um, super fine steel wool and Vaseline. That might work. That might work for you. Now, whilst we're in here, let's have a look at John Woodfine. Now, John, I'll just, first of all, I'll come to this camera so John Woodfine is a talent now he has sent some pictures to me and what I've done is I've created a slideshow now the first picture in this slideshow will be um, how it was at his daughter's house where she had this kind of a DVD library and the television in the middle so the DVD library was cabinets that you know she probably bought and you know move around from house to house and then so she wanted dad <laughs> was dad john would find being dad to build something but he made her join in and help so here we go i'm going to throw the transition here we go this is the original and he says my daughter asked me to build a dvd floating shelf unit there she is helping dad and i thought you could show it on your show sometime all 25 millimeter mdf I sprayed it with two pot paint. The corner units I screwed from the back. The center unit I used biscuits, pocket holes, and mini top clamps. So there's John down on the floor with a jack winching it, the whole unit in. And these are covers for the top clamps. I got these two photos around back to front. There you go. There's the little mini clamps. Uh, I used to call those towel rail bolts. And there's the pocket hole. And he's made some plugs as well. And there you go, plug put in, hardly anyone would know it's there. Let's have a look. So that's all finished and about to put some of the stuff up. Keep on going. And look at this. How long do you think it's going to stay neat and tidy like that? I know when, I, when my kids were young, um, I, I don't know. I, that, that would just end up a mess. But I'll tell you what. What a fantastic job John's done. And it matches the colors of the wall perfectly. He's done an amazing, an amazing job. Um, his daughter is a very lucky girl indeed. Let's switch back over to here. 
There you go. So if you've got a project like that that you've done, or like Ken's where he's building that table for the Lego, or if you've done a CNC thing like uh, John Lafferty has as well, send them in to me. Now, 11.30, how about I show you another thing? And this is from Stuart Cotterell. Oh, let's see if I've got a photo. All I've got is one photo from Stuart, and it's this table that he's just finished building. So here we go. Uh, Dave, here is my latest project with a little more fine finishing to go. The first pictured as originally intended in my mind and just sitting on the, middle, on the metal frame I had. The wood is African white and black wingy for contrast. Then the saga began. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, cutting the templates and curves was interesting. Then after glue up, I tried cutting a recess for the top to sit on the base. To shorten the story, tragedy stuck on the second router cut. The bit came loose and went all the way through for a perfect slot to view right the way through into my outfeed table below, which is what it was sitting on. This is his outfeed table for his table saw. Um, I decided the table would now be smaller and proceeded to cut the outer rim off fully. I focused on the jig point not coming out, leading to a lighter grip on the router. Holy cow, it climbed out to my horror, of course. Thankfully, it and the jig, this is his router we're talking about, going flat strap with a cutter in it. They flew away from me, otherwise this may have been a rip steward. Off it went across the outfeed table and put a permanent reminder for me in the saw stop table. <clears throat> then proceeded to bounce off to attempt to route through the concrete floor until I got to turn it off. Amazing. On viewing, she who must be obeyed, now I'm guessing that's Mrs. Cotterell, suggested the ring be turned into a mirror. So that outside part you can see there from the black circle, make it a nice mirror. Uh, however, not to be beaten by this incident or, or have a wimpier looking table out of expensive timber, I used epoxy to connect everything. Thinking the coffee table theme should continue, I embedded coffee beans in the epoxy. Now, I don't know if you can see on that, but that ring that's kind of a brown color is coffee beans set in resin. <laughs> it's amazing. So yes, Routers are extremely dangerous in my hands. African hardwoods are indeed very hard to work with, don't sand easily, and can be nasty to work with health-wise. I may need to stick to walnut, cherry, oak, and maple in the future to avoid some of the more exotic timbers. I did faithfully work with dust collection, festal sanders, and masks following Stanton guidelines. All the best, still alive and anxious to start another project when finishing is finally done over this weekend. What? An amazing job. And what a, what a close call. I'll tell you what. I worked with a guy who was using a router and it caught and the router went up his arm and opened him up right the way. And he said all he saw, it happened so fast, all he saw was a pink mist in front of him. That was his blood. They're so dangerous. So if you're using a router, please only take well, on the CNC machine, I never take it past six millimeters in one pass. When I'm using a hand router, I try and restrict it down to three millimeters in a pass maximum. Any deeper than that, you get a slight twitch, that cutter is going to go straight into the wall and grab and throw the machine out. So there you go. That's, that's just amazing. Okay. Do you know who made it? Okay. So you guys are having a discussion regarding Ken's saw. That's great. Let me have a look here at what we've got next on the show. I think I've got everything down the side. I'm having a look because I have left people out before. Um, John Lafferty, John Woodfine, Ken and Stuart. I think that's all that I had to get covered there. We do have the winner of these things to announce very, very soon. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Okay, what's the next thing I wanted to have a look at? Okay, resin. Seeing how we were talking about different resins. Now, I'm playing around with this, and you can see straight through to my shirt on some of these. This is a clear 
down this end. And these have actually got written on them what they are. Now, I was looking for a satin finish. Now, I don't know. It's, I'm, the problem is, as soon as you go for a satin finish, the resin section, which in the back of your mind should be nice and clear like a window, is not going to be your resin. It'll be cloudy. So, I don't know. I don't know. As I say, I'm mucking around with this. One of the things that I knew but I didn't do was when you, when you put a finish over the top. So this has had, I sanded this to 4,000 and then I finished with Liberon finishing oil. Now I know that uh, Go Natural Timbers finishes theirs with Liberon Danish oil, or superior Danish oil. And I'm curious to see if anyone can get a satin finish where the resin still looks, you know, nice and attractive without being too opaque. So the thing is, when I did it with the uh, Liberon finishing oil, I used a rag. Now all rag, except for lint free, has a little bit of lint in it and the tiny little bits of lint end up, and paper towel of course is even worse, the tiniest little bits of lint end up creating these little kind of pit marks everywhere. And you can't see it on the show because, you know, the camera hasn't got that resolution, but I can see it from here. Now they, so what I did was I used a brush instead. Now the people suggest squeegees. I don't have a squeegee, so I thought I'd give a brush a go and it worked really, really well. But like an idiot, I forgot to cover it. So I should have put it down on my painter's pyramids or the, the little things that John makes for this bench. And I should have put another piece of timber an inch or two above it to completely stop any dust that's in this room settling on it because this takes around five or six hours for the oil to dry. And, uh, and uh, I'm trying to catch up what's happening down there as well. Janice David, around 15 to 2,500 most go away for sales and get under 2,000 most times. Okay, good. <laughs> I've got no idea what you're talking about there, but anyway. So there you go. That's just something. If you're going to do resins, this is an option. As I say, it looks great. The oil looks fantastic. It's a high gloss finish if that's what you want. But I'm chasing a satin. And I'm just trying to find that really, really sweet point between satin timber and glossy finish here. I don't know what the answer is. Um, yeah, and cover. There you go. So some colors also, some of the dyes, this one here is blue. It was really blue when I first did this. So some colors you will need to put more of the pigment in than you would for other colors. So the yellow is fine. The red is fine, not a problem at all. This is supposed to be black, <laughs> green black. And you can see it's not. Okay. All right. What's the next thing we want to do? I'll just put that down there. Um, what have I been up to? I've been up to creating more videos for Carbotech, as you know, that's what I've been doing. It's just under the pump. I did a Sorby video not long ago for myself because I had people as well as myself wondering what's in the deluxe kit, what's in the basic. So I thought if I do a video, people would be forewarned if they wanted to get that kind of thing. Talking about airfare, okay. Um, so the videos I've been doing, the last one I just did was on a two-speed bandsaw. Now, Derek Lark asked me last week, he said, Dave, an interesting thing for the show might be, why do they make a two-speed bandsaw? You know, what's it all about? So I thought, because I've just finished doing this video, I'm read up on it. And uh, I knew before that particular part, but there's a whole lot of things that I wasn't aware of on that particular saw until I was forced to read the instruction book. And that's how I get the knowledge. I read the books. I, because I'm doing the video, I have to focus intensely hard on that particular machine and I get to know it intimately. So I'm, I would work on that machine for about a week assembling it and studying it before I start even making the video. So I just shoot the cameras while I'm putting it together and then I create a story after it. And uh, so Derek, the reason is because for cutting non-ferrous metals. So the standard speed, and I'll tell you the one that's sold in Australia at 50 hertz, is 900 meters per minute. That's how far the blade travels, it tracks. 
So it's 900 meters a minute for cutting timber. Now, if you've got one of these saws that's a 60 hertz model designed for, you know, probably the USA, it travels at 1100 meters per minute. So the different hertz will affect the motor. Now, when it's geared down for cutting non-ferrous metals, it's 440 meters a minute. Now, there's two sets of pull. There's two pulleys on the motor, and there's two pulleys on the band wheel's wheel itself. So what happens there is when you get these machines, the back set of pulleys, so the back motor on, sorry, the back pulley on the motor and the back pulley on the bandsaw's bottom wheel are your standard speed for cutting wood. And then there's a jockey wheel, you know, which is a tensioning wheel and there's a crank on the side. You turn that, pulls the wheel back in, takes the tension off the belt. And the belt is a V-belt, but don't get confused that it's like a V-belt on a radiator or a generator in a car or alternator in a car. Well, the old Holdens that I used to have. It's a flat multi V belt. So it's around about, it's similar to the belt that I've got in my table saw. It's around about four V's across. So if you're reading about it, it says a V belt, and someone comes out and she says, oh, I need a new V belt for my um, bandsaw, and they come out with this little flat belt, it's the right one. Um, it's <laughs> uh, a butcher's bandsaw, of course, yes, can. It'd be different as well. Um, so you advance it to the front and also make sure that the belt is covering all of the V's and not off one to one side because it's easy to, to get them misaligned. So I, I make comment about that in the video as well. And then you tighten up this little jockey wheel and it pushes this little, um, little pulley. Well, it's basically, it's a flat, uh, wheel I guess a, a flat wheel that's wide enough for the belt and it creates tension and makes it all work so there you go it's for non-ferrous metals don't try and cut steel with a bandsaw because it probably wouldn't last very long and I don't know what kind of thicknesses you can cut with these non-ferrous and you need the right blade you can't just use your standard blade that you've got in there so you need the special blade I think it's around 13 TPI uh, for those that don't know that's teeth per inch so there's all of this kind of stuff that I knew, but I enhanced my knowledge by doing these videos. So in the long run, it's advantageous for you guys as well. I encourage you to watch them when they release them. I don't run them on my channel because I will get accused of all sorts of being in their pocket and I'm not. It's just totally for them. All right, now what's the next thing? I want, I want to have a look at the drawers. Now these are the drawers and this is one that I've cleaned up. Now notice that I have not done anything to the brass. It's original. So that's one and I've got another one here and this one looks really tacky. Okay so I'm going to switch her over to Carl Cam again and we'll take the hinge or sorry we'll take that off and give this a clean. It's a flat blade screwdriver and I was always taught as an apprentice to dress my screws. Now that might sound really strange, <laughs> but that's what I was told to do. So on the other one, I have already done that. Can you see it? Whoop, <laughs> wrong camera. There, see all the slots are in line. And you know what? Because I did that, I didn't take it up to Carl Cam. There it is, up at Carl Cam. So, standard flat blade screwdriver. They're only short screws. And also the way these, these brass handles were made, they, uh, come on, out you come. These screws are cooperating a whole lot more than the last lot. And they're genuine brass screws too. Yeah, I love it. 15 minutes to go. What do we talk about? You guys have a chat as well. There we go. So there's... That's the little handle. And see on the back, it's got these... Whoop, there, little bumps. And so he's made these little recesses for them to go into. Now you can see that, that's the old cedar and it looks really filthy. 
we're going to get and see how quickly this separates. I don't know if you can see it too much. If I tip it on its side, but the yellow stuff on the top is the oil, obviously. It's floating on top. So we'll give it a shake. And there you go. And I'll get some more steel wool, more 4 I never really got into this kind of stuff. You know, so it's, as I say, you don't do this when you're building cottages. No way. This is, this is something that I, I'm learning all the time. And if you guys want to take advantage of that, by all means. So let's give it a clamp. And you get right into this little spot here as well. Any kind of lips. I'm just using my fingernail to push it in. Maybe my thumbnail in that one. Got to want to get rid of all of that black mark in there. And across the grain on the end, it doesn't worry it. And then this way. The camera is behaving itself so much better. kind of torn with this project because my mother does not know that this fell off my trailer. <laughs> She'd be mortified. So I'm going to, I'm not going to, I don't know whether to tell her that I'm doing this or, or not, but I'd love her to see it when it's all cleaned. You know, she's got a fantastic me memory for what it was, what it was like before. And uh, if, it's, if it's anything different, she'll pick it straight away and I'll be in trouble. I just, I don't know what to do. What would you guys do? Would you tell her or would you just uh, let her blissfully think that everything's fine? Well, it's going to be better than fine when I finish with it. I'm going to bring the other camera over and set it up beside me. Because I think it might give an even better image. Let's see how we go here. Tipping it down like that. I'll see what it looks like from the side here. That's not bad. There you go. And the focus on here as well is not going to hunt. See, look at that. How good is this? So I can show you from the side how it looks. And now I'm going to hit it with a bit of wax. And remember, this is the wax that I will be, if you buy a bench from me at the show, I will give you one of these. These are fantastic. That's what I use. I'm not... Um, the mob that make this wax don't pay me to do this. I just... <laughs> Mum doesn't watch YouTube. Um, I... I, I use their stuff because it's sold where I work and I think, you know, it's, it's nice stuff. It's what I use. Derek sent me some wax in. I haven't used it yet, Derek. I'm sorry. Um, I will, when I get time, I'll give it a shot. So that's with the wax on before I've buffed it. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit before I try and buff it up and have some coffee. Mm. Arthur will tell her when her time comes, but she's only 90. I was talking to Vicky about this the other day. She said, we're going to live to 110. I said, well, good on you, baby. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'd want to be alive at 110. You know, if I slow down as much as Barry does, I don't know, never say never though, do you? Can we buy your bench in the States? No, Ed, you cannot. I used to be able to do it, but the situation that happened was I could not get product liability insurance. So I can't it. I can, I've got that in Australia, not a problem. You can well understand why I had to stop. You can buy the plans, that's not a problem. So if you buy the plans from me, away you go, do it. 
but uh, I can't sell you the product until I can get a company. Apparently, the world hates the USA or the world's insurance companies hate the USA. I don't know why. I don't know why. Tell her in the story of how much love you put into it to restore it like new. David, I'll tell you what, I might make my mind up when I've actually finished it. When I've finished it, and if, if it comes up well, uh, you never can tell. Yanis, dad is 88 and says it is too old. Mum and all his friends are gone. That's an interesting thing. My mum also says to me, I said, Mum, you've got plenty of friends. And she said, but they're all the same age as my children. Have a think about that. So all the things when she was a teenager growing up, these are our informative years. You know, I personally, I love music from the 70s because that's, you know, I was a teenager then and I loved it. Now, let's add 30 years for a generation. So that would be to 2000. Now, some of the music I like from 2000, but, you know, I really love listening to the stuff back in the 70s. So you can. Yes, Chris, I can send you one in New Zealand. That's not a problem. Um, because New Zealand and Australia are basically the same thing. So, yeah, as I say, have a think about that. If, you're, uh, if all of your friends die and the, own, the next generation are the ones that you're still alive with, you'd still feel very lonely. So I understand exactly, Yanis. Um, David Lewis, hedging your bets, play it safe. Why not? I think so. I think that's dried enough. Let's see how I go with a bit more paper towel. I'll tear a couple of these off and see if I can. <laughs> the thing is, the faster you rub the wax, the more, the more it's going to buff it up. Fast. And pushing down on it as well, hard. These are all too int intricate for me to be able to do with the machines. So I have to do this by hand. Imagine living so old that you were the same age, or sorry, the only people left were your grandchildren the generation from your grandchildren. That'd be, I don't know if I'd like that. Do you see, um, what's his name? Someone turned 102 the other day. Was it Kurt Russell? There we go, have a look at that. This brought it back to life. Let's see if I can find one that I haven't done. All right, look at the difference. Tell me what you reckon. Worthwhile? Give me a sec. This is the rest of the, the top that I'm rebuilding. I'll come in closer. I reckon all those colours are coming up beautifully. Just to say on the theme, do you have an underground furniture club in your area? No. Kurt Douglas, that's it. Look, I'm not, I don't watch TV. Uh, I only get spattering of news. I, I was about to turn this computer off this morning and there's a little news thing comes up in the corner before you turn off. Says, oh, quick, 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 quick. Well, have a look at me. I think, all right. And I saw that... 11 people killed in America yesterday. 11 people. Now, we get, we, get, we get desensitized to this kind of stuff. And I thought to myself, right, let me, let me visualize what 11 people is. I have 11 grandchildren. That I can relate to. Imagine someone grabbing 11 people that you know, put them in a room, Shoot them all. We see this on TV and we see this in the media. You know, we've, been, we've become desensitized. Crazy. I'm going to put the, um, I'm going to put the screws back on. Let's see if I can switch to a better camera. 
Uh, that one. And I'm going to raise this part up. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. And lock it there and tip that down. Coming closer. Oh, how good is this not hunting for focus? Beautiful. Okay, there we go. And I said I was going to... See these? Fragrant draw liner. See that? It says it up the top here. Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm, as I said, I'm not going to get rid of the patina off this. You know why? Two reasons. There's a whole lot of mucking around in there, and I reckon once I started, I'd never get it all perfect. Unless I put it over the um, a, a cotton waste style um, buffing wheel. That would possibly work. So I'm going to pop that back there. And these are the little brass screws. I say genuine brass. And don't worry if there's a little bit of wax left in there because that will actually lubricate it a little bit as we're putting it back in. I'll line that up and dress the screw. There it is. The screw now is dressed. I don't know if you can see it. So the slot on the screw head is the same direction as the grain. It's just one of those little things when I was an apprentice that the tradesman thought was very important. Mm, come on, round you go. I don't want to break it. Beautiful, just got there. <laughs> I'd never get one of these again. Well, I, could, I possibly could, but I'd have to hunt high and low to find these screws. These are a little dome head. So that as you're, um, as you're getting a hold of the handle, it's not going to hurt, hurt your fingers. I need to take that just a little bit further. Got it. Scary bears. Last one. Last one. Now, you all want to know who won. So it was Australia. It was in Australia for the Jessam Stock Guides, Table Saw Stock Guides. Isn't it beautiful? What a difference. It's shellac, yeah, definitely it's shellac. See, on some of them, even on this one, I don't know if you can see it, but just here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's orange peeling. Well, that's what I call it, crazing. And that's typical of shellac. So there you go. So that was, as I say, I'm not promoting. I'm just letting you know what I used and you saw it worked. So I used that and I used that. 4.0, it doesn't have to be this brand. Just get 4.0 of steel wool, whoever you want. Um, this is U Butte. Uh, polish reviver and it worked great and then I used some natural wax wherever that is it'll be around here somewhere and there you go draw liner and what a, it was cut perfectly <laughs> so there you go that's beautiful I'm going to do the rest and I've got to work with these now these will come up once I hit them with the Libron finishing oil you'll be amazed so I'll leave that for the, not next week, because next week I'm not going to be here. Did you know that? You know why? Do you know, do you know why? Because I'll be at the show. Now, you may not have picked up, I may not have been direct enough to let you know that I'll be at the Timber Tools and Artisans show Friday, Saturday and Sunday with my wife, Vicky who will also be there with earrings. And what I'll do is I will put a link in another hour or two. I'll put a link in the description box below and you can check out the stuff she does. They're abs it's absolutely amazing. And um, John, John from Yellow Box Shed, he'll be there with all his 
uh, starter packs and possibly even these little blue dots. See these blue dots in the Stanton bench here that I've got? They stop things falling through the holes. And I will be giving a discount and also I will be giving a couple of things as well away if you purchase one of my benches. So there we go. I can't be clearer than that. <laughs> Guys, got to try. All right, who won? Who won? If you live in Australia, you're in with a chance. If your first name starts with L, you're in with a very big chance. If your last name starts with R, it's even bigger. And Leroy, you will be jumping off the edge of your seat at the moment. Leroy Reading, you are the winner. And uh, Leroy's a lovely guy. And he's actually come up to the workshop and I helped him with some um, white oak. We thicknessed and dressed it all down for him. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great week. And I will be broadcasting the show from the show next Sunday. Same time, same bat channel, all that kind of stuff. Please come down, see me, and uh, have a look around the rest of the show. There won't be, I thought there was going to be glass blowing, but there's not. There's going to be uh, a blacksmith working there. There's going to be so many other things. And all your regulars, like the Gifkins jig and Carbotech, are going to be there with, the, with a bit of a stand. They're actually going to be across the aisle from me. So I'll be able to wave to my boss. I think the managing director is coming down to run the stand. So you could meet Simon as well if you wanted to. Okay, guys, there you go. Leroy, <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. There you go. Uh, what is the name of the wax, please? Okay, let me see if I can find it. Right at the end of the show, I'll see if I can find it. Here it is. Traditional wax. Whoop. <laughs> that camera's not going to know it. There you go. You beaut traditional wax. That's what I use. All right. And that's what I'll be giving away if you buy one of my... Did I mention it? <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I shall see you either at the show or from the show broadcasting next week. See you later. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. Catch you next week.